One of the problems we often run into is throwing away precision in our calculations by converting from one uh, variable data type to another or doing other things that just don't quite make too much sense. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm going through and just measuring the time and then measuring the difference in time between now and when I last went through this loop. So we've got a couple of uh, variables here that are declared globally so that we can keep those values in between uh, passages through the loop. And then here at the top of the loop, we're finding the time now from the micros function. That's the most accurate timing we can get and we're converting it to a floating point value time now in seconds and we're using a divisor of uh, a million with a decimal point on it to make sure that we get it to do a floating point calculation so floating point numbers only have about six or seven figures of precision uh, because they need that extra space to account for the exponents so as a result we can calculate the time since our last passage through the loop as delta t equal to the time in microseconds minus the time last through in microseconds. We could also calculate it as the time difference in seconds calculated from the time now in seconds minus the time last time through the loop in seconds. And we're updating these times that we last went through the loop right down here at the bottom of the sketch where it's passing through and uh, coming out of the loop and it just records time now and time now seconds to be saved as the last time values. So we've now got these time differences between each passage through the loop and we can figure out what the error is that we've got because the time difference in seconds won't quite match exactly with the time difference in microseconds and we can calculate that difference by multiplying the time difference in seconds by a million to turn it back into microseconds and subtracting the delta t in microseconds, which is the actual time that, uh, that it's taken between loops. We didn't throw away any of that precision. We can then calculate what the maximum error is by checking each time we go through the loop to see if the current error is larger than the previous value and updating it. When we print these out, we'll see some interesting effects. So here's the time in seconds that's gone by since I started the, uh, started the program. This is the time in microseconds and the time in microseconds from the last loop. So printing the time now and the time last. And then the delta t in microseconds around 140 microseconds. And it varies depending on just what calculations are having to happen in this loop. And then I take the floating point values for time in seconds time from last time in seconds and we can see that they're pretty close to each other and they differ only out here in the last few decimal places the microsecond time differences and I can calculate the difference in time the DT in seconds and I get for example uh, 152 microseconds here instead of 140 so I've got an error of about 12 extra microseconds in my calculation and the largest error I've seen so far is about 50 microseconds. So that's pretty large in comparison to the total of 140. That's giving me more than a 30% error in my timing. So let's run this code again. I'm going to go up here and restart it. And we'll see what we get for errors initially and how they change with time. So initially, our errors, our, even the maximum errors we've seen, are fairly small. Fractions of a microsecond. Because the total number of microseconds is still pretty small. So it's represented really well by these, uh, these time and seconds values. They have enough precision. But as these numbers get larger, we lose the precision to represent them over here in these floating point numbers. And as a result, we see that this uh, error in our measurement is increasing and we're now getting errors over one microsecond. And if we go on with time, and this will print out for a while, uh, we'll see that uh, by five minutes we're getting typical errors of around 15 microseconds. And by later on we get up to over 100 microseconds error or even as much as uh, 370 microseconds error 
and sometimes we get values for the delta t in seconds equal to zero so that we can't even tell that any time has passed. That would be a particularly problematic uh, situation if we were using that delta t to calculate a derivative because if we had a change in our measured value but no apparent change in time our derivative would calculate to be infinite and that's just not correct. So when you're measuring, particularly when you're measuring time, be sure to maintain as much precision as you can. And that means recording all of these values, these time values in microseconds, and using them in microseconds whenever we need to do a calculation related to the time. Don't convert them to seconds for any purpose other than printing them out in a nice, neat, tidy way so that we can see a value in seconds over here that makes sense to us and so that we can plot values in seconds on a graph that makes sense to us.